Hi, welcome to episode 2 of what I'm just going to keep calling Untitled All Star for now because why not, right? It's fine. Got all sorts of goodies coming your way again today from the New Trips Voyage game to Andro Dunos 2, maybe a few other things as well. In fact, definitely. Let's just deal with them as they come. Um, but first of all, we're just normal men. What do you mean, normal men? We're just innocent men. <laughs> <laughs> you make a nice cat, but with your antlers. Now listen here. Send more in. Good ones as well, you'd like that. CBBCHQ, PO Box 9989, something else. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Kate, I don't know. I don't have a house. Come on! I live in a kennel. Kennel! Stupid game. You just, I'm sick of this every day. We're going to be looking at some of your dinner picks. What are you having for dinner today, Hex? Goose. <laughs> get ball! What? Oh, get us down! Quick, Tony! There we are. We didn't expect that, did we, Cocker? No. <laughs> I got trapped on the Arctic hood, if anyone's interested in technical terms. Right after. I know! <laughs> You'll love this. <laughs> Send in more what for? The same thing. Yeah. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Read it and weep. Weep then. I'm off. I'm off. Come on then, you pesky pass. <laughs> You're finished! What theme do you think Ed and Naomi will have for their big day? I mean, they're not a couple, are they? Hmm? They're married to other people. Well, they're just trying stuff out, you know. Window shopping, as it were. <laughs> Goodbye. Trip's Voyage Gem Rush by Dreams Hobbyist turned full-on game dev Ufo Lace is a delicious little free treat that you can play on PC right now. It's a high-score minigame featuring their delightful mascot who was first seen and who won awards in Dreams and it's really wonderful to see them keep the character alive on a whole new platform and with maybe even more adventures to follow. For the uninitiated, the original Trip's Voyage is a superbly polished and fluid 3D platformer that came out on Dreams a few years ago, and full disclosure, I do have a little personal connection to it in that I helped the creator source the game's soundtrack through a music jam, and I'm really proud of doing stuff like that and happy to see the creators I supported in Dreams take the next step in their development journey. In this, you control the titular Trip as they have to collect as many gems as they can while being chased by some pesky ghosts who each have different behaviours a la Pac-Man, and it's a case of getting as high a score as you can while staying alive. I get pure fast-paced Mario with the multiplayer vibes here but as a single player experience and it's definitely got that one more go appeal. It's a free download from Itch.io and you really can't argue with that price point even if it does feature just the one map as a free demo or proof of concept of sorts. But it's really amazing to see the game development journey of Youthful Lace and Friends continue and I do hope that we can see even more from Trip in the future. Check it out. Hello and welcome to the Door Jam. Um, the jam in which people were asked to just make a door. Our first one comes from Yami no Neko. Yeah, you can't really swing it and you can't really slam it. Um, I have to remove two marks for those reasons. No swinging, no slamming. It's an 8 out of 10 door. We now move on to this door from Wonder Boy Sega 89. You can't slam it and you can't swing it. So I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. We now move on to a door from Killikith. I did imagine like what sort of, there we go, look at that, that's amazing. You can't slam it and you can't swing it. So I'm going to remove two marks and give it eight out of 10. We now have an alien door from Duckonomics. You can't swing it and you can't slam it. So I'm going to have to remove two marks and give it eight out of 10. We now have door K471. This is from Trico Belt. Mm, can't really swing it, unfortunately, um, and you can't slam it. So I'm gonna have to remove two marks. But try go it is a really good door. I give it eight out of ten. Um, and we now move on to an abstract thick door. This is from George Off. You can't really swing it, and you can't really slam it. So I'm gonna have to remove two marks and give it eight out of ten. But George Off, thank you for making that door. Here's Sci-Fi Door from Vanta Black Sixteen. Now you cannot swing on it, and you cannot slam it, so um, 
I'm, I'm, I have to remove two marks there and overall give it an 8 out of 10. Um, and now finally, for the door jam, we move on to the Arachnidor from Ito Bear. Oh! <laughs> now, it appears as though we can't necessarily close it. Um, and also, I find myself in a position where um, I think I might have to actually just brick it up. It's a shame that I did have to brick up one of this evening's doors, but sometimes it happens. Um, it's 8 out of 10 overall, you know. That was just a random little thing. Death Run TV, developed by Laserdog and published by Merge Games, is a hardcore twin-stick bullet hell shmup that's sure to scratch the itch of fans of fast-paced and frenetic action. Originally released in June 2021, this Unity-developed high-score-focused roguelike is something I initially did pick up back when it first came out, but somehow it got stuck in my pile of shame for all that time up until recently, and I am glad I finally got around to it. As you can no doubt see, there's a real relentless pace to it all as you dispatch enemies, dodge bullets and rescue prisoners, trying to build up combos and raise your score in a full game show environment, and there's mechanics reminiscent of Robotron and Nex Machina. There's a large variety of weapons and perks available, and plenty of environmental traps to dodge alongside the enemies to dispatch as you complete wave after wave before having to GET TO THE job before the whole arena is destroyed. It keeps the pace going. There's also plenty of customization as you get to choose a perk and a starting weapon for each run, as well as having the ability to give your character a lovely wee makeover to fulfill all of your fantasies. The options and general accessibility are extended further, with a menu allowing you to implement all sorts of in-game tweaks to either make it slightly easier or indeed harder for yourself along the way, depending on your skill or how you're feeling. I'm not really a trophy hunter, but something I didn't realise until I started playing is that you can actually get the platinum for this in just a few hours, as most of the trophies do come for just finishing it, and then veterans of the genre should be able to do the bare minimum of that relatively sharpish, with each individual successful playthrough being just about 20 minutes or so. The remaining trophies are locked behind some secrets which require you to do a few basic things in a certain order to unlock an extra area on the true ending, but there's an art to trying to get the highest score possible, and it's that hook that will keep you coming back time after time. A feature I've not really had the chance to check out, but which seems super cool, is some streaming integration in which the prisoners you rescue get named after the viewers of your stream, and also the audience get to vote on whether to give the player either power-ups or more obstacles. It's a pretty cool concept and something that definitely adds a little layer of extra depth. Ultimately, it's a game that's perfect for killing the occasional 20 minutes here or there, and even if it is relatively simple and not necessarily a top-tier title in the genre, it's still very fun and regularly available in sales for just a couple of pounds. Since it came from my pile of shame, and I'm sure that you've got a pile of shame of your own, maybe you do need to get through some things from that first. But if you ever do find yourself at a loose end, you can do a lot worse than giving this a go. Go check it out. Alright, let's have a little break, right? Here's some music. Ultra crew, you listen up and you listen up good. My nephew Kevin's flying in from Cincinnati no. this weekend and he wants to join your little club. And since I paid for your headquarters, Kevin's gonna be in your little club, capiche? Now, now, Mr. Moneybags, crime fighting is a very serious and dangerous undertaking. Are you sure you want Kevin to- Listen here, bucko. Kevin's in your club. That's the end of it. Put him in your stupid theme song for the super duper ultra boys or whatever. <laughs> Oh! Hey, hey, it's the Ultra Crew You better watch your back, all you evil dudes We're rolling up our sleeves, we got work to do So form up Ultra Crew Do, 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 do There's Ultra Boy I shoot lasers from my eyes Back in door Behold the power of flight Robusto I can lift up a house The Incredible Sneak I'm as quiet as a mouse Spectral Lab I'm as clear as glass Bendy Sue I can stretch like elastic The Human Typhoon I'm like a fish. And also Kevin. <laughs> Whoops, he died.
Okay, my Scottish people. You got me on this one. Major Max and the Freedom Fighters by Grothrot is a Spectrum era inspired original made in dreams on PlayStation 4, and it's a prime example of a super talented hobbyist who's released a ton of amazing content in a place where you probably aren't looking. In this retro treat, you play as various characters through different stages, each of which gives you the taste of different old school genres, which will make any one of my generation squeal with joy, while also being sure not to outstay their welcome. After an intro that gives each of the characters you play as, and also the baddie, a lovely little intro, you step into level 1 in which you just use X and Square to dodge and shoot in an appropriate manner, and it does very much remind me of the Amstrad game Army Moves, which I had as a child. And after a few minutes of doing that, you'll then find yourself moving on to level 2, which is more reminiscent of things like Crossfire, another retro treat. Level 3 is then something else entirely as you explore a city and try to defuse bombs, and all in all the game will take you about 15 minutes. But it's 15 minutes of joy as everything works just the right way and nothing outstays its welcome. The dialogue's funny, the characters are quirky, the graphics are original and authentic, and it's also got scoreboards if you're that way inclined, as well as an original soundtrack by Ari Kyo that hits all of the right notes. To sum it up, Major Max is a marvellous little trip down memory lane and a wonderful example of what a talented hobbyist can do with the right tools. If you do check it out, then honestly check out the rest of their catalogue as well, because they have put together a bunch of awesome stuff. Meanwhile, I'm still dreaming that maybe one day someone will make All Star Ate My Hamster. Au revoir, mon ami. Yeah, check out all these busy guys. I know it was Flying Ante last week, so they're all busy, presumably getting things ready for the little larvae that'll be hatching soon, but you can see them essentially digging new tunnels, right? All of these, you know, this pile of dirt here that's all being left at the edge, you can see them going down underground, picking it up, taking it out. You know, they're digging their tunnels. It's cool. It's interesting. And this seems to be the epicentre of it, because, you know, look at that, all the way along. Fair play to them, eh? Fair play to them. I used to have an ant farm when I was a wee boy, it was fascinating. Animal Well by Billy Basso, published by Big Mode, to cut things short, is a puzzle-based metroidvania with a retro style that is sure to excite fans of experimentation and discovery. It's a celebration of life, but also a stark reminder of how dangerous that can be as well as a pixelated masterpiece with modern trimmings, but it's not going to appeal to everyone. It's deeply intuitive if you like that sort of thing, but it also manages to be utterly mysterious in a way similar to a FromSoft game as there's environmental storytelling galore, and the various areas of the game can be completed in any order, depending on what ultimately suits you. You play as a cute, squishy ball-like creature with proper come-eat-me eyes, maybe a bit like some distant cousin of Kirby who's gone off the rails a bit, and you're ultimately put into a 2D world where after a brief tutorialised linear path, you'll have four directions to go, with each leading to different upgrades and bosses. A bit of Mega Man here, a bit of Dark Souls there, with a bit of Metroid thrown in. So far so good, a recipe for success. Your goal, of course, is to explore these four corners of the world and defeat the bosses in whichever order of your choosing, but I did find on my first play that I accidentally wandered into what is generally considered the hardest area, and it's the one that requires you to generally also have tools from the other areas, and I had quite a horrible time, if I'm being honest, while even struggling to make my way out of it to try a different one. But a restart later, and after a quick replay of the intro, I chose a different path, and from that point onwards, it was generally pretty smooth sailing. I suppose the order in which you do the stages is almost like a custom difficulty, and it's definitely cool to give the player that choice. But I can also see where people might have some bad experiences due to the path that they just so happen to go down. As much as I generally love games that do give the option of doing things in a different order, that is always one of the downsides of it. Sometimes, the various animals you meet will be friendly, and sometimes they'll be hostile and I personally found it a fun experience to learn the difference between the two as you first meet them. Generally, most of your interactions with them result in single-screen platform or item puzzles, but there are also some who will follow you from screen to screen in a quite frankly terrifying manner. All the way throughout your journey, as you'd expect from a good old Metroidvania, you'll get various tools which can help you with your platforming, item gathering, general animal defence, and even to be used for secret things that I don't want to spoil, because if you do play this game, then really, you're better knowing as little as possible. I'm not spoiling anything massive or anything, but even the footage here is technically little spoilers of fun, cool things. Just go play it if you want, but if you already have, or if you just never planned to play it, then hi, thanks for staying.
A single playthrough of the game may only take about 4-6 to six hours depending on how skilled you are and what path you take, but there are secrets galore meaning that to get 100% you're talking more in the region of 10-15 to 15 hours, and as such, there is a decent amount of gameplay and puzzle solving on offer as you find yourself revisiting old areas with new tools to unlock hidden secrets. One of the things that slightly frustrated me, but which I also totally understood from a retro and design perspective, is that there are no real checkpoints. You always just respawn back at your last manual save, and they can only be done at certain points. It can get frustrating if you find yourself struggling at a certain section, which is a few challenging screens away from your last save, but it is only ever just a few screens, and I suppose it all ultimately makes you better at the game. Because I went into the game deliberately not knowing much about it, other than it was a metroidvania that I was told I would probably like, I actually expected it to have combat, but you really do find yourself rarely as the aggressor, and instead you just have to avoid the various predators who are trying to hurt you while you go about your business. It's interesting. And it's definitely more of a puzzle platformer experience than any sort of action game. Despite that puzzle focus though, and many leaps of faith, there are some challenges that will require marvellous dexterity such as the optional climbing of narrow chasms using your bubble wand just as one example. There really are things here for fans of accurate Twitch based gaming. I found myself compelled to keep playing in order to discover the next puzzle or the next tool, or even what interesting uses of the tool that I just picked up I might get to partake in, and I'm really happy that I played the game. I didn't go for 100% and I'm not sure if I will, but that's just me. I completed it and I'm happy. It's a game I'd recommend, and it's currently available as part of any PS Plus Extra subscription. Honestly, for what it is, it's brilliant. Enjoy. Alright, let's have a little musical break, okay? This is Seafull James with their song So You Wanna Be A Robot, with a video made by Tricobalt. If you wanna be a robot, you gotta put in the work. Shed your flesh and bones. Yeah, you're a robot, robot, robot. 
This is an art attack? This is an art attack. This is art attack. Z Exodus 2 from Dreamiverse superstar Trix9 in collaboration with some of their all-star friends is a packed to the brim PSN worthy title full of heart, polish, challenge and most importantly fun. If you're not familiar with the original Z Exodus then the best way to sum it up by comparison would be with titles such as Joe Danger or Oli Oli with maybe even a little bit of Trials HD snuck in for good measure. Essentially, you control the coming of age stunt superstar Z Exodus himself through a series of colourful and varied levels in which there are dozens of objectives to complete, ranging from simply just getting to the end, performing lots of tricks, finding collectibles and even uncovering secret worlds. The whole aesthetic is really quite consistently stunning and the evolution from the first game to this is equally magnificent. The world map that's used as a level select and which also has a few little secrets of its own is a brand new feature and being thrown straight into this world it really is such a joy. As for other upgrades from the original, well, the controls are tighter, there are more levels and they're also far bigger with a lot more to do. Really, just the entire scope of the game has grown, just as Zed themselves has. And I can't stress enough how cool a mascot I really do think Zed is. Zed it's got an all-original soundtrack featuring top talent such as Masher Buttons and Ari Kyo, and there's even a bonus pinball game with its own scoreboards from the ever-astounding Fluffy and Sassy. By this point, I'm sure you all know that I'm not necessarily the best with words when it comes to these little scripted sections, but I just hope that my enthusiasm and passion for this title comes across and that the very fact I'm making the video also lets you know that this game is worth playing. It is a stunning Dreamiverse masterpiece. But also, if you haven't, you should really check out the back catalogue of all of these creators. There really is such depth and variety from not only tricks themselves, but also all of their collaborators. You could spend countless hours just diving down these creators' rabbit holes and I really hope that you do. In conclusion, Z Exodus 2 is a must-play gold standard title on PlayStation hardware. It's guaranteed to make you smile at least once, and let's face it, smiles are important. Yo, this is me, hello, and I'm in an abandoned tunnel. Um, I swear, there used to be some Space Invaders graffiti here, right? And it's just not here anymore. There's all sorts of other graffiti, but there's not Space Invaders graffiti. And I was going to eat a packet of pickled onion monster munch in front of the Space Invaders graffiti. Um, just to sort of give a point. I'm not like all manicured or pedicured or whatever. But look at all this. There used to be some really cool Space Invaders graffiti here, and it's just not here anymore. Um, here's me with the hood down. Whoa! Honestly, it was really good graffiti, and I was going to eat a packet of pickled onion monster munch in front of it and declare war and say that the pickled onion monster munch was absolutely fucking banging. Space Raiders! Oh, shit. Andro Dunos 2 from Japanese game developers and brothers Picorin Soft is a high octane shmup insta classic that I've had the privilege of playing recently, and this is just going to be a quick wee mini review to shout it out and say it really is a shooter worth playing, and that in the current PSN sale especially, it's a real steal. Published by French indie lovers Pixel Heart, this is a brand new sequel to a Neo Geo original that came out 30 years ago, and I never had a Neo Geo, so I can't say that I played it or was necessarily even that aware of it. So we will really just be talking about the new sequel here, but I love that there are developers and publishers who are passionate and skilled enough to revive IPs as promising as this. It's always cool to see. Anyway, I suppose something that I should say is that I've always been a fan of these sorts of games and high action twin stick shooters as well. I enjoy learning them and trying to optimise my runs, and I like that they always keep the player engaged with constant action. I've often heard others describe them as bullet hell, and I can get that. But to me, they're actually kind of bullet heaven, as I enter a zen-like state and forget any real-life troubles that I might have as I get to just focus on that bullet flow. It's almost a form of meditation. Some of my favourite franchises through the years have been Gradius and R-Type, and pretty much anything from Housemark. But anyway, look, enough about me, let's talk about the game. As you've no doubt already seen here, the graphics are pretty cool, 
from the ever-changing and varied backgrounds to the enemies, bullets and explosions. It's all masterfully done and a treat for any Pixel fans out there. The movement of your ship is also incredibly fluid and seems genuinely perfectly paced to the obstacles that crop up. Some games like this allow you to change your ship speed, but in this there's just no need for that at all as it's so tightly designed. Dodging bullets is a joy and dashing in to collect a pickup or to try and intercept an enemy to keep your combo going always leaves you on the edge of your seat and you do have four different weapon types to switch between at any point and you even start the game with all four equipped. At first you'll need to experiment a little to see what's best for each situation but once you get into that flow of knowing what to switch to for each encounter it becomes almost like a puzzle shmup of sorts. But at the same time there's no real negative if you decide to play the whole game with just one of those weapon types. It's totally possible. You just won't necessarily get as high a score. But in that sense, it's very accessible. I would say that easy mode also adds to this accessibility, as when playing on that difficulty, not only is the game still frantic enough to be fun, but also forgiving enough that I reckon most of you could complete it. And there's no shame in easy mode. I certainly cut my teeth in it when I was learning the mechanics. You'll find yourself constantly collecting upgrades for your various weapons and it's totally up to you to decide what you level up at each specific moment. I like when these games give that level of player choice. Upon dying, whichever weapon you have equipped at that moment will downgrade, but going back to the accessibility point for a moment, that doesn't happen to you on easy mode, so you can in fact just level up everything and even if you die you will still feel like a proper action hero. At this point, I have completed the game on its hardest difficulty, and I found it to be just about the right level of challenge, honestly. It's such a well-designed and well-balanced game, and the levels are also interesting that you do find yourself absorbing their details and learning them as you go. It's top tier. It's available on all your home consoles and PC, and I really do highly recommend it for any fan of the genre, or even anyone who just wants to metaphorically blow some quarters and have a blast for a few hours. A single playthrough takes about 30 to 40 minutes, but my playtime must already be at least a dozen hours. It's marvellous. I'd like to thank Impy nominated Dreamer Talc33 for recommending the game to me. They themselves are actually a fantastic shmup developer, and they're behind Gaia Hawk, one of the best shmups made in Dreams. If you've just come here for Android Dunos 2, but you have a PS4 or PS5, then you really do need to check out the whole of the Dreams shmup scene. There's so much talent who've made great stuff for you to play, and even some kits for you to make your own things. Anyway, it's about time I wrap this up. It was actually just meant to be a quick little thing for a Sunday afternoon, because quite frankly, it's raining outside. Au revoir, mon ami. John Pertwee, Roger and Jessica Whitaker, Walter Koenig and Pat Cash, Michael Ball, Barbara Windsor, Cannon and Ball, Richard Orford and 911, Anthea Turner, Bob Cowgees, Chris Goffey, Little and Large and Hank Marvin, Valerie Singleton, Ruth Maddock, Michelle Gale, Paul Shane, Liz Fraser and Freddie and the Dreamers, Joe Pasquale, Herbie Flowers, Ted Robbins, Matt Lorenzo, Gilbert O'Sullivan, Bernard Gallagher and Stratford Johns, Ultimate Chaos, Russell Grant, Lorraine Kelly and Elkie Brooks, Jane Asher, The Bay City Rollers, Fern Britton, Ainsley Harriet, Sean Maguire and Darren Day. Shiwadi Wadi, Tracy Dawson, Gay Search, Christopher Biggins and his pantomime troupe, Carol Borderman, Sherry Houston, Linda Bellingham and Craig McLaughlin, Willie Carson, Tony Hart, Brian Conley, Brenda Lee and of course our own Bob Cowgee. Tessa Sanderson and our very own Bob Cowgee. Tessa Sanderson and our own Bob Cowgee. Tessa Sanderson and our very own Bob Cowgees. To the Gladiators, Jim Bowen, Claire Rayner, Eddie Lodge, and the Trogs. Philippa Forrester, Terry Nookins, Sasha Distel, Engelbert Humperdinck, and Neil Sedaka. To the Royal Navy, Sue Pollard, Sonia, Cliff Richards, Matthew Kelly, Lorraine Kelly, the cast of Coronation Street, David Essex, Roy Castle, Matthew Corbett and Sooty, Gary Wilmot, Gemini, Status Quo, The Beach Boys, Joe Pasquale, Ben on Wookway, and Victor Obogu.